Good morning, folks. Website now back in the swing. Take note of the homepage and login changes. We've got 19 plus hours of audio discussion, evening news daily, two chapters of Agenda 21 Counter Strike, two chapters of Starwater, and Chapter 3 is coming at the beginning of December. Remember how scientists have been telling us that they predict B die offs could be indicative of systemic contractions to come? Well, now we're beyond supposition, beyond prediction, into actual evidence from the past. Bees are our planetary canaries, if you will. Interesting bit somewhat related to my mining diligence background. I'm familiar with NI43101s, crushers, flotation mills, followed by the acid leach process, but not so much for the rarest elements like indium or on such a small scale like this. And I can't even begin to imagine what is essentially a super leach in wastewater would do for that industry. Typhoon Crosa still alive in the South China Sea. Vietnam still on deck to take that storm next. Baja watching this system slowly creep towards the coastline. Looks more diabolical than the experts are calling it. Large group of storms heading between islands here with some pop-up showers due in the west to start the week. Meanwhile, these pressure systems appear comfortable following one after another cresting onto the UK and then the rest of Europe. Watch the leading east convergence. NOAA's US prediction for this evening has the prime watch for snow out west. You can see that moisture funneled over the west coast to the north by high pressure mixing with what comes inland to the south into that low pressure. They'll mix for the dusting this evening. It appears we weren't the only ones with eyes on that backside eruption shown in yesterday's news. It's yet another example of how big flares don't need to face Earth to change our energetic situation. Just like we explained how CMEs affect the entire solar system regardless of ejected pathway. Now that blast went nearly right at stereo A. So we're going to put Earth in NASA's Enlil position here on the JPL orbital diagram and locate Mars and Ison. It's going to be close as we come back to Enlil. Glancing blow impact to the comet could occur from tonight through Tuesday morning. Earth-facing sunspots have kept popping some M flares, but nothing like the X-class blasts we've seen. Even coming from the Earth-facing group, the CMEs have been fairly insignificant if they come out at all. The sunspots facing Earth do continue to look ready, however, focusing on the two Earth-directed groups down south. The larger group out front still has bipolarity within that penumbra for a delta class. Not much happening in the trailing group yet, apart from growth, so I'm content to skip over him and look to the limb. Now, solar shut down in the back of my mind, I've still got to go ahead and say this is one of the most impressive cresting groups I've ever seen. Solar wind now showing two impacts. One last night appears to be a speedier burst, followed this morning by higher density. The sensitive magnetometer and electron flux are reacting, but also the duller KP and Canadian chains, which react when instability is more than just minuscule. Coronal hole power, relatively constant. Incomers look powerful, but we do have a directly Earth-facing opening. New moon eclipse occurs this morning. Mercury can join the sun already, and Saturn does it in two days. Always seismically relevant. We see multiple rumbles in the Tonga region. The South Pacific was in general uptick with the east shaking as well. The area around Japan has been in my scopes for a few days now, and we can never ignore quakes above 4.0 in the Caribbean or upticks within the old American plate. Shots of our star to close, eyes open. No fear at 6.25 a.m. Eastern time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.